Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So as usual today, let's just go over the market, see what happened, what we can expect for the rest of this week. Keep in mind, guys, by the way, two pretty important things. Number one, this is going to be a shorter week. The market is closed on Friday. And tomorrow, arguably more important, in the morning, I believe about an hour before market opens, we get the dreaded CPI number, the consumer price index. Essentially, if you know, if you know that is the easiest way to think about it, is it's just essentially an inflation reader. It's essentially telling us or giving us a, a decent idea as to how hot inflation is and things like that. So I'm not going to lie, it's looking a little bit spooky. Uh, I think the current consensus is around 8.3%. So you guys, you know, as usual, if it comes in higher than that, well, that's really, really bad. If it comes in exactly at 8.3%, well, that's still not great, but it's not like as bad as it is, of course, going higher. And if it's anything lower than 8.3%, especially if it's somehow magically below 8%, which I would be shocked if it is, but if it is, then uh, that's great. Then we rally and go to the moon. Um, I'm not sure if oil gets priced into this because the current, uh, you know, the recent surge in oil, I'm not sure if that's part of this data or if that's next month. I'm not sure. But either way, regardless, that's going to be an important piece of information that, in all in all honesty, uh, I think will potentially dictate uh, the market for the foreseeable future, at least until, you know, for the next week, maybe two. So let's just go over exactly what we're looking at here. So number one, Tesla closed the day down uh, almost 5% actually, which is pretty low. Uh, ending the day pretty much at a, the, the day's lows uh, at $975.93, which is just a dollar shy of the low of the day. Now the volume, pretty low volume, just barely sub 20 uh, million. So nothing too crazy. It's a very slow day, very sideways day, mainly because everyone is just waiting for that uh, CPI data for tomorrow, right? A lot of people are just kind of on the sidelines. Uh, I bought a bit more, more myself, not too much. I bought about uh, 10 shares. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot, but like, I mean, relative to port size, it's not a, a horrible, crazy amount, but I mean, I'm nibbling. Uh, I sold another put for the week for Thursday in the 950 to 40 range. <clears throat> so essentially, if it ends 950 or lower, I'll be buying another, sh you know, uh, more shares, essentially, which I th it very well might. But let's go over the scenario. So number one, first and foremost, the daily candles just looks, looks quite, <laughs> quite atrocious, I'm not gonna lie. Not really ideal. Uh, some people look at this candle as a bullish candle in a way, because it's like, I just don't see how you could. It, it, this this is not a very bullish candle, man. And first of all, it's red. Number one, number two, the amount of selling pressure we have up here is just unreal. Which I mean, it kind of makes sense. People are just trying to you know kind of get out. They're trying to like you know play a little bit safe, maybe you know trimming a little bit uh, in preparation for tomorrow's number, etc. So you know it's it's not surprising. Uh, this RSI is still just pointing straight down. You can see the MACD curl bearish. Uh, starting to show red here as well. So overall, it's not looking hot. In all honesty, so like in all honesty, I I would. I'm pretty I'm pretty confident that we're going to be seeing like a 940 950-ish Tesla probably this week especially if the number tomorrow isn't anything, you know, great. We're probably going to be seeing mid 900s Tesla this week, if not this week next week. Uh so essentially the way I see it right now looking at the 1 hour chart you can see the RSI is extremely under uh, over oversold, underbought, oversold, whatever you want to call it. Uh but overall, you know, I'm not gonna lie, Tesla's looking weak, guys. Like, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I've, I've bought shares, and like, I have shares. I have a stake in this now. So you can't say that I'm being a bear because I want it to go down. Like, if it goes down, I'll buy more. But I'm, as usual, continue saying it exactly how it is, regardless of my personal stance or personal position. Um, because, you know, it is what it is, right? I'm, it's, it's stupid to be oblivious because based on the way it moves, I can also play that, right? I have ways to play this on the upside and the downside. I already played on the downside by selling puts. Uh, and if it goes there, like, that's fine. Like, I'll. But I'll buy it. I'm not. A, it's not a problem. If we start rallying up this week for whatever reason, I'll sell calls. And you know, if we keep going down, I'll buy. I have more to buy. Like you know, like, you, you want to make sure you're in a position where you're able to play both sides. One of the worst feelings I found personally is having your like your favorite stock, like in this case Tesla, fall, and you're unable to buy because you're out of cash. That's like one of the worst feelings. So try not to put yourself in that position if you can, unless of course Tesla's at like insanely low numbers, then you just kind of buy. Anyways, so you can see above us, we have like a lot of gaps now. We have a gap from today, we have a gap from last week right here at 1056, and we still have the gap all the way up here at like 1090. Again, like I said, this 1090 gap not looking too fruitful, still possible to fill, but until we get some obvious um, display of bullishness, I just can't imagine that happening anytime soon. So that's number one. Number two, I do expect to see this gap and this gap fill uh, sometime off of the bounce. So essentially, if based on just straight technical analysis, what I'm personally seeing and predicting at the moment is a drop to this level here. Pretty much where I sold my puts. I, I really do expect us to drop to 950, 940, somewhere in that range, and I expect the bounce. Worst case scenario, realistically, worst case scenario, I expect a drop sometime this week to like 910. That's like, in my opinion, like, or 900. That's like the realistic worst case scenario, in my honest opinion. We drop all the way that low. Will it happen? 
I think it's like a 25% chance that'll happen. And I think it's like a, like at least like a 80, that would, that would make a lot of sense, about a 70% chance that we'll drop to this area and then like a 5% chance for the bearish side and like a 5% chance we're going to drop like somewhere all the way like straight down here this week. Um, I don't think we'll drop this low. I don't think we'll even drop to 900. Not yet. Maybe we will later, but not yet. But I do think we there's a decent chance we'll drop to like mid 900s. That's essentially what I'm seeing there, guys. So again, that's my prediction. If somehow the numbers are good, uh, we'll be, we, we will rally probably to fill this gap at the very least, if not higher, to fill this gap at 10.58. Sometimes the CPI gets a fake rally where people that maybe put themselves in a position for like a super bullish or bearish position kind of cover when the news wasn't as bearish as they expected. So sometimes we get like a fake rally for a couple of days and then it just continues to sell off. Either way though, regardless of whether or not we rally from here upwards or we go straight down, either path we take, I think ultimately we will still see Tesla in the mid 900s, potentially the low 900s. And that's the first thing I'm looking for. And that's the thing I'll be personally expecting essentially. So until then guys, that is what I'm currently seeing. So let me know what you guys think down below. See you guys for the next one. Peace.